Just two months after bankruptcy, H.J. picked himself up and formed a new company. Through this and other dark moments in his life, he was anchored by twin beliefs, devotion to God, and an unshakable vision of his destiny. He was obsessively determined. He had a dream, he had a vision, and he was just absolutely committed to pursuing it. It is making pure food and distributing it. It is forming a company to do that, and that's what gets Henry Hines up in the morning. By 1886, 40-year-old Henry Hines had bounced back from bankruptcy to create a major American company. Eager to expand overseas, he journeyed to London and called on Fortnum and Mason, purveyor of fine food to the royal family. He stroked his whiskers, put on his top hat, and he bursted right into the front door. And he said to the man, I'd like to see the head buyer. And they said, who are you? And he said, I'm Mr. H.J. Hines, and I'm from Pittsburgh, USA, and I'd like to sell you some of my products. He was an awesome salesman. He went in and showed his products and talked about them and had him sample the products. They said, I believe we will take them all. Everybody was shocked, including H.J. Hines. Henry Hines was a century ahead of his time in anticipating the global economy. In 1895, Hines opened its own plant in London, the first of many overseas outposts. Hines UK became so successful that many British customers believed it was a local company that expanded to America. The new advertising campaign helped cement Heinz's global empire. By 1904, H.J. was selling his wares on all six inhabited continents. Decades before Coca-Cola or McDonald's became symbols of the international economy, Heinz products were found in all corners of the world. H.J.'s personal fame extended beyond the business world. He loved to travel and was constantly exploring faraway lands and potential new markets. At each stop, the local press invariably turned out to welcome the Pickle King. Whenever he would show up in town, it was highly identifiable. He had this great visage, and his later years he had this white hair, these mutton chop uh, whiskers. He always dressed extremely well, and people knew him wherever he went. And newspaper reports would seek him out. I mean, they loved it. I mean, they were able to put a tag on him that uh, he made for good copy. The son of immigrants had made himself world famous. He had changed eating habits, convincing consumers that food made in an unknown factory thousands of miles distant could be as good, if not better, than homemade.